Hey everyone, it's Sam here today and I wanted to do this really cool video for you guys. It's a little different than what I usually do. So it's about how to transition into using better for you beauty products or organic. So basically I did a research report about a year ago in English and this is all the research I gathered along with some of my own knowledge and also some pictures and stuff. So if you find any one part interesting then feel free to pause it. So let's just get right into it. I used Prezi for this PowerPoint, so it's really cool looking. So let's get started. So here's one piece of information, and basically it's saying that our body is like a sponge and we absorb everything we put on it, and so it can absorb a lot of chemicals, and we have at least 10 different products that we use every day. So you want to actually be careful about what you're putting on your body because it actually can make a difference on the inside, and people think that it doesn't because it's on the outside, but it soaks in. So, um, on refinery29.com, um, I learned that green products can eradicate irritation and sensitivity. So green products are basically organic, natural, good for the environment, anything like that. And it just is natural because they are gentler, so they are going to be less irritating and they're good for all types of skin and stuff, so it's good for sensitivity. Um, so my f second step besides that knowledge that I just shared is to read the labels and know what to avoid and know what you don't want and it it varies between everyone but here's the three that I look out for. First is phthalates. It's pronounced phthalates without the P and basically they're found in artificial fragrances and they are a class of hormone disruptor and it's pretty crazy the stuff that they can put in our products. So I kind of directed this towards more of a teenage audience so that's why I talk about hormone imbalances and stuff and asking masculine or, acting masculine or feminine, it's kind of exaggerated. Um, so another part of information that I found is that parabens have estrogenic activity and have been found in almost all breast cancer tumors, which I found really interesting. So I always, always look out for parabens and I don't get products that have parabens. And if a product is paraben free, oftentimes they'll put it on the front. So also look out for that. So here's a little um, graphic. And so my little summary is that it's cancer causing, which is crazy, and then also it's like feminine, and I just added that little um, exaggerated part that you're going to start acting girly from brushing your teeth with your uh, chemical toothpaste. Next is this that says, fragrances are synthetic compounds and companies don't have to share the information of what's in the compound. So if you think about it, in your ingredient, in your products, it oftentimes says fragrance or parfum, and they don't explain what's in those. So it's a whole separate ingredients list that we don't even know, and they don't have to tell us, so we never know, and that's why a lot of people are allergic to fragrances. And so now I realize that that's why. It's because we don't know what's in it, and it's probably very irritating. So look out for that. So this is just some two pictures of, of what I found in my house. So I found gluten in one of mine, sulfate, fragrance, and the whole thing about saying that um, if you can't read it, then it's not good, that's not true because if you think about it, anything can have a chemical name. Cucumbers can become like cucumberous extract, and they can become really long names that no one knows, so don't assume that if they're long, it's bad, just know what to look out for. Um, so the last thing is to replace the good with the bad. You can make your own or you can find better ingredients. So number one, you always want to look for the USDA seal. I always look for it. I just feel like it's very trustworthy. And so here's a little graphic showing you the ingredients list on the left and the right is very different and it's organic. So I don't know why you need it. I think the one on the right looks a lot better. And also you can use food for a lot of your products, including like things like honey. So organic basically means hormone free, pesticide free, cruelty free, chemical free, and more. So it's very trusty to say something is organic, but if it's USDA organic approved and um, allowed, then basically I think it's very trustworthy or trusty. Just because if it's USDA approved, then it's very, it has all those categories in one. Natural doesn't really mean much. Anyone can put that on their products, so if it says natural, don't be fooled, that's kind of a sales tactic that they try to play a trick on you, but they're not normally natural. And also remember that there's tons of different labels, so just get to know them and get to know how to label read. So here's a really cool picture, or it's like a pic collage. 
So basically this is a bunch of stuff that I found in my house and a lot of it's food because a lot of the products I use is food such as coconut oil. So a lot of them are USDA organic but also there's the quality assurance and there's the non-GMO and there's other um, ones that are certified organic besides USDA. And also if you're not looking for organic because sometimes it can get a little pricey, you can also look for on here like it says no parabens, no dyes, no silicones or if it says sulfate free in big letters or things like that. There's tons of different ways that you can get what you're looking for. Not everyone has to look for USDA organic. So also I found this really cool um, long quote from a website from Alexander Spunt on Good Magazine. So basically it just tells all these cool um, properties so you might want to pause the video if you want to read it. But basically it's talking about baking soda, aloe vera gel, coconut oil, honey, and all the good things that they can do. And so uh, with that information you can use those products for tons of different things. So what I use them for is for example baking soda. You can use it as an exfoliant in a face mask. You can use it as a hair mask or a shampoo because it's very cleaning to the hair. You don't want to do it too often so that's why I put a hair mask. And it's just very cleaning so it cleans out all the products that you've been putting in and all the gunk that's built up. Also, baking soda is very absorbent to odor and it's absorbent in general. So it's good for deodorant and deodorizes and absorbs the sweat. And toothpaste, it's very good at whitening teeth and also absorb absorbing odors and stains. Next is aloe vera gel. So we all know sunburn treatment, that's the obvious one, but it's also a really, really great facial and moisturizer because it's so hydrating to the skin. And you can just use it straight from the plant. You don't need the bottled version that has fragrance added. Also, coconut oil is really good. This is kind of what's been pretty big the past few years is coconut oil, so it's a great moisturizer. I like to use it as a lotion. Um, you can use it with the baking soda and some peppermint to make toothpaste. Um, hair moisturizer or a mask. I just put a tiny bit in my hands after a shower to bring back some moisture into my hair or I put it in my hair before a shower and let it sit a little while so that my hair can seal the split ends and stuff like that. And also you can use it with some sugar as a hand and body scrub and a face moisturizer. And also is honey which I love honey. It's kind of like a miracle product and so you can use it as one single ingredient or as another ingredient in another recipe for facials which I love just using plain honey as a facial or a spot treatment and also as a lip gloss. It's moisturizing, you can use it in a lip scrub but it looks like lip gloss and so you can use it for that and it tastes great. So in conclusion, watch out for parabens, folates, fragrance, and parfum. Look for the USDA seal or any other seals that you like anything other that you trust and then also just make your own DIY your own products that are better for you and you can read the ingredients and they're simple they're simple ingredients it's not a long list and you know what's going on to your body rather than just judging it by how good it smells or if it works judge it by the ingredients as well thank you so much for listening I hope you enjoyed this kind of speech that I did I hope you learned something from it and make sure to like comment and subscribe and check out all my beauty, um, DIY, organic stuff down below. I will link them all down below and I also have some playlists. Thank you. Bye!